Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the most important thing that you need to know for your A-level. This is the foundation of everything and it's quantities and units. Some of this is going to be familiar to you from IGCSE, but some of it may well be new. So on the screen right now are the subject uh, key things that you need to understand. Do feel free to pause and look through those at your leisure. But we're going to go straight on to how we write numbers. Um, so this is a classic uh, example of something you might see, 4.38, look at this capital G and a little m. So we break those up into two different things. There is starting with a prefix, so that's the capital G, um, that tells you how big or small the number is, and it is optional. Um, this is then followed in this case by M, that's the unit, and that tells us um, what you're actually measuring this number in. Um, so in this example, this G, um, that is a, a symbol which means giga. So we'll talk about this in a bit, um, but it means times 10 to the power 9, and then unit that in this case is m for meters. So this is telling us that it is 4.38 times 10 to the power of 9 meters. So this is going to be a length in this case. So in uh, physics, we use the System International. It's a French-based system, um, and it defines seven base units that everything else in the universe can be defined from. So there they are on the screen. Um, you actually don't need to know um, this last one, uh, the Cadella. Um, this is not used, um, it shouldn't be used um, at A level but all of the others are. Um, and what we're going to show you over the course of the next several lessons, and indeed your whole uh, A-level, is actually anything else that you measure ever in physics, or indeed any other science, is actually a, uh, a, der a derived unit from these. They come from these. So everything else is called a derived unit. So let's have a go at a uh, simple task. Well, not that simple, actually, but we'll have a go. We want to express the derived unit of joules in its base units. Um, this is the kind of thing that you may well be asked to do on your A-level. So, the derived unit J uh, is that. That means joules. Um, just a bit of history for you. Uh, if a unit is named after someone, and that's, in this case it is a, a scientist named Joule, um, we always use a capital for the, uh, the symbol for it. So this is the symbol. But when we write out the name of it, even though it's named after a person, so usually it should be a proper noun, it should be capitalized, for units we don't do that. We leave it as a lowercase. So it is correct to write it as Joules with a lowercase j. Now, there's lots of different ways that you can do this, um, that you can find out what this is made from, um, but the easiest thing is to think of any equation that you can that gives you an answer in joules. Um, so I'm going to use one of the easy ones, which is the one for kinetic energy. If you remember from IGCSE, we know that kinetic energy is equal to a half times mass times the square of the velocity. So that energy that is in joules and it's made up of other things. Now if you look at this equation um, I can say that kinetic energy is equal to mass so mass is equal, uh, sorry it has a unit, the SI base unit of kilograms and then it's got the square of a velocity so that would be a velocity which is meters per second and it's going to be squared um, so that becomes, if I multiply out my brackets, m slash, oh, sorry, meters squared per second squared. Now, now you're at A level, this slash, that's not very useful. Um, if you think about what it actually means, it means meters squared divided by seconds squared. Um, and now we're getting into A level physics, you might have, um, you might get quite uh, bogged down with lots of things being divided by other things. So there's a general algebraic rule that if you have a to the power uh, b over c to the power d, 
That is exactly the same as writing a to the power b multiplied by c to the power of negative d. It's just a general rule of algebra. So in this case, I'm going to rewrite this m slash s, slash s as meters squared multiplied by seconds to the negative 2. So that's got rid of this slash um, and it's going to make it a little bit more readable for me in future. Um, so what this tells me then is that my final answer is that joules are exactly the same as writing kilograms multiplied by meters squared multiplied by seconds to the power of negative 2. Um, and that is the derived units. So um, if you look down here, I've got just kilograms, meters and seconds. Nothing on this right hand side is, uh, or is not on my uh, base unit list. So I have worked out that joules are actually the same as saying one joule of energy is equal to one kilogram meters squared per second squared. Um, and that's not a particularly useful thing to think about most of the time, which is why we call it a joule instead. But what you are always going to be able to do in physics is you are always going to be able to take any other unit and work out what it is in base units. And this is something that we're going to do, we'll do some, as some practice in our lessons. Okay, so a common use of this is to check an equation. Um, so... In physics, especially as you go through your A-level, you're going to start to find some slightly more tricky equations. And there might be times in your lessons where you think to yourself, hmm, have I actually used this equation correctly? So homo homogeneity of units is quite a handy tool to use that with. What it basically means is if you have a left-hand side of an equation, so that's something before the equal sign, that should have the same units as the right hand side of your equation. Um, and you can use that, like I say, to kind of sometimes check have I, uh, you know, if I'm supposed to be squaring something or is it divided by something, am I multiplying by it? You can use units to check that out. So let's give an example of that. Um, this again is the sort of thing that you might be asked to do at A level. Show through homogeneity of units, also known as dimensional analysis, that's the same sort of term for it, that the work done moving an object is the same thing, energy, as kinetic energy. So, on the previous slide, we said that kinetic energy is equal to, or it can be measured in joules. Um, sorry, let's do it this way, actually. Let's put it under here. Kinetic energy, that can be measured in joules. Um, and the usual equation that we'd use for that um, is kinetic energy is a half mv squared and on the previous slide I worked out that that is kilogram meters squared per second squared. So I'm being asked show that work done is the same as kinetic energy. So um, with that the equation is work done is equal to uh, this is the work done moving an object. So moving an object that is force multiplied by distance. So, as units, let me just change my colour here to show that I'm now working on the units. As units, uh, work should have the equation of joules. And uh, force, that is measured in newtons, multiplied by distance, which is measured in metres. Now, I haven't yet shown that this is the same, because what I should see is, if I worked out previously, joules in base units should be kilogram meters per second squared. So am I able to show this yet? Not quite, but, but that's okay because this Newton, Newtons are not, if I scroll back, they're not on our base units. So I need to rewrite Newtons. What can I rewrite Newtons as? Well, um, if you remember, a Newton is a unit of force and force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration. So if I write that in its base units, masses in kilograms, acceleration 
is in meters per second squared. So what I can do is I can replace this Newton with kilogram meters per second squared multiplied by meters again. Now this is where we start to see that, that you know, a bit of algebra, a bit of, al uh, bit of maths is always going to be essential at A-level physics. I've got a meter here, I'm also multiplying it by a meter here. So I can collect those terms and write that as meters squared. And here I've got a per second squared. And look at that. Watts are measured in joules, and I can prove that. I can prove that watts here and kinetic energy here, they are the same type of quantity, or same type of thing. They're both energies. And the way I can prove that is they have the same base unit. The base unit of watts is kilogram meters. Sorry, the base unit of work done. Sorry, if I, if I said watts earlier, ignore me. I'm too lazy to edit the video, edit that out. Um, the base unit of work done is kilogram meters squared per second. Just noticed that mistake as well. Per second squared. The base unit of joules is kilogram meters squared per second squared. So... In the question, I was asked to show that the units of work uh, moving an object is the same as kinetic energy. So I've shown here the base units of kinetic energy. I've shown here the base units of work done moving an object against a force. And I've shown that they are the same. So I have completed that task. And that was just uh, what I was saying earlier. So that's the, um, how, where the, the suffixes come from, where the, the things that we measure them in come from. The second half of that number, if you go right back to the beginning, where we had our 4.38 gigameters, um, this, is an, this is called an SI prefix. And the word pre means in front of. So the prefix comes before the unit. So at uh, A level, you need to know, well, I would say go and learn all of these uh, prefixes. They're useful things to know. Um, so just go and memorize what they mean. Now, what you want really is just the symbol and uh, the base 10 representation of it. Um, but if you learn, yeah, you also prove you, you, you do want to learn the name as well. I wouldn't go and try and learn the decimals. That's going to be just a real pain. Um, so let's see what we can do with that. If I look along here, I've got this capital G giga. So a giga means 10 to the 9. So what I can do with this number is rewrite it as 4.38 times 10 to the power 9. And I can just then leave this uh, meter behind. So the idea is you replace uh, the, uh, the, the prefix with what its uh, base 10 representation is. So it means the same as writing that. If you need to write a number with an SI prefix, the idea is to just rewrite it in standard form to the closest power that's a multiple of three. So if I do that, I could go one, two, three, moving the decimal point backwards. Um, now that's not very useful. So I could write it as 0.38 3 times 10 to the negative 3. And then if I look through my base 10, I can see negative 3 is a milli. So I could say 0 0.383 milli. And I'll just put a, um, I'll put a unit here. Let's say this is in amps. Um, so this would become uh, 0 0.383 milliamps. However, generally speaking, we don't tend to, to write things with a leading zero. Um, so you could also say, um, if I move it another three decimal places, then I could also say it is 383 times 10 to the negative 6 amps. So it's also 383 microamps. 
Um, and these two are absolutely identical. Yeah, 0 0.383 milliamps is exactly, exactly the same as 383 microamps. They mean the same thing. Um, but generally, for the convention is um, you don't tend to have a leading zero. So you normally would go um, to the next uh, SI prefix, so you don't have a, a zero in front. You will, though, however, see in the exams and things, they, they, they do sometimes have zero point something. So it's kind of a... Uh, you, you can use your discretion, but I would say if you're looking for a general rule, um, don't have a zero in front. Okay, so last thing to think about then, um, and that is SI prefixes when you're dealing with areas of volumes. So a really, really common mistake that we see a lot at A-level is somebody writing something like this. Um, if, I'm told, if I give you an a, a area of one centimetre squared, a lot of people will say, oh, okay, well, let's just change that to um, millimetre squared, actually. Um, a lot of people will say, okay, so that equals uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 3 metres squared. Really common um, and completely wrong. It is not equal to that. And it's easy to see why once you think about it. Um, but this is a trick to do it. This is how you can always work out um, what an area is. If you are asked to convert areas with an SI prefix, um, what you need to do is always start with a one meter squared block. So in this case, I was uh, asked to convert from millimeters. So what I can say is a one, me is a one meter squared block that is equal to uh, a thousand millimeters by 1000 millimeters, sorry, a, 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 a one meter squared, sorry, one meter length square. So, now by looking at the area of it, I can say one meter squared is equal to 1,000 multiplied by 1,000 millimeters. Um, so, one meter squared is equal to one times 10 to the power of six millimeter squared. Um, so, in this case, then, one millimeter squared, if I just rearrange the equation, that is one divided by 10 to the six meter squared, or one, sorry, uh, 10 to the negative six meter squared. Yeah, so if you kind of remember that fact, you'll be fine. Um, but just please, as soon as you see um, that you're dealing with areas of volumes, be really, really careful. Um, so just as a little bit of fun, um, uh, let's look at this one then. So again, if we do the same thing over here, if I now have a one meter cubed uh, cube, then that will be one meter by one meter by one meter. So I can say one meter cubed. Sorry, that would be a I wanted that in millimeters, didn't I? So that'd be 1,000 millimeters, 1,000 millimeters, 1,000 millimeters. So one meter cubed is 1,000 times 1,000 times 1,000. So one meter cubed is 1 times 10 to the power of 9 cubic millimeters. Um, so again, just be really, really careful with volumes and we will do some practice of that in the lesson today. Right, last thing to talk about very quickly, we need to talk about estimations. So, uh, again, a, a, an interesting little thing that's on the syllabus. Um, there is no um, definitive way of learning these things. Um, but you should, whenever you answer something in, in a physics exam, you should check that your answer is roughly correct. Um, so a good tool for that is called Fermi estimation. This isn't actually something that's specified by the exam board, um, but I do find it a really handy technique to learn. And the basic idea of guess the dimensions of something to the nearest power of 10. Um, so... 
uh, that would mean, say, a human then would be one meter. Yeah, a human is not going to be ten centimeters. A human is not going to be ten meters. So you get to the nearest one, the nearest um, whole power of ten. Um, so a pencil, again, a pencil is not going to be one centimeter. That would be useless. Um, a meter long pencil would also be useless. So we would say ten centimeters for a pencil. You then plug the estimated values into the equation, um, and then you check that the powers of ten are the same. Um, so, for example, if we say a uh, volume, let's go with a pencil, volume of a pencil. Well, if I think about what a pencil looks like, I can model it um, as a cylinder. Um, and so, what do I need to know? I need to know the length and I need to know the uh, radius of that. So, uh, length of a pencil, that is going to be, uh, I'll say, as 10 centimeters. So I said before, a meter long pencil is crazy, a one centimeter pencil is also crazy. Remember, we only need to go to the nearest power of 10. Width, a little bit trickier. Um, well, no, again, it's not tricky, actually. It's not tricky at all. 10 centimeters, crazy. That would be a, a block about that big, so that'd be far too big. Um, a uh, one millimeter pencil, that would be teeny. So I'm going to say that the radius of a pencil is one centimeter. Now, um, we know that's not true. We know that that's, um, that that's too big, but that's OK because we're just checking for a ballpark. So uh, volume, of a, volume of a cylinder, that is uh, pi r squared multiplied by length. Um, so the volume I would be looking for would be, I'm going to use about 3 for pi because pi is about 3. And again, I'm just checking for a rough ballpark. Um, so that would be 3 times uh, 1 centimeter. So that would be a 0 0.01, so this is just to get an answer in meters, uh, 3 times 0 0.01 squared multiplied by uh, 0 0.1 because I wanted to convert these into meters. I've kind of done that on the fly, um, but it might be more sensible actually to write these as uh, in, in meters next to them. Uh, just to, just to be clear. Okay, and then when I quickly bash that into a calculator because I suck at mental maths, that comes to uh, 3 multiplied by 0 0.01 squared uh, multiplied by 0 0.1. So the volume of a pencil I would expect is going to be in the region of 0 0.0003 which is one, two, three, uh, three times, uh, sorry, uh, I'm going to do this way, 0 0.3 times 10 to negative three uh, meters cubed. Notice I haven't tried to convert that to cubic centimeters or anything like that, um, because converting units is hard and we don't like it. Um, so there you go, that's just a, a little, a little uh, tool you can use to see if that's in the right ballpark. So when you do work this out um, with the values that say you've measured from something or you're given an equation, you're expecting something um, in the region of uh, times 10 to, sorry, not times 10 to the 3, times 10 to the negative 3. That's a rookie error. Um, so you're looking at something in the region of uh, 0 point something to negative 3 or, or some number to the negative 4. Now, um, in order to understand this, they are going to ask you to estimate the sizes of things at random. So there's no definitive list, um, but it should include quite a wide range of things. So obviously stuff that you come across in day-to-day -day life, like cars, uh, tables, but they also do do some odd things like uh, oil drops, like uh, atomic radius, like uh, the scale of the solar system. So what I recommend is just make a list somewhere in your notes, and any time you come across an interesting number, um, a particularly good one would be the radius of the Earth, um, make sure you make a note of it. So you've got a rough, excuse me, you've got a rough idea of what the size different things are. That's going to make life a lot easier for you um, when you come to doing this estimation work. Okay, that's all we've got time for. Um, I know there's a lot to go through, so I'm sure you've got questions. If you do have any questions. Break, make a list of them. Come to them uh, in the. Come to me in the lesson with them, and I'll see you very soon.